Hello. In this video, we're going to take a moment and just go through the structure of how uh, JCreator is set up, and we're going to look at what a workspace is, a project is, and a file is, and specifically how the the image that you see on the screen, so your your working environment, how it matches up with the file structure in Windows. So we've just opened JCreator here, and we have two recent workspaces I've been working with. I'm going to open Creator World RP1. And so the first thing you notice is that inside here we have our workspace. And then within that workspace is a project. We can actually add multiple projects here. So if I right click here and I say add new project, I'm going to call this um, example project. A project name can have a space in it um, because a project name is, is simply a file folder on a computer that holds all the files associated with that project. So now we're going to hit finish. We don't need anything else in this case. And you'll see another project appear below. Now, notice how example project was bolded. That means this is called the active project. And something funny that happens in JCreator, well, it's not funny, it's just one of the, the ways it was designed, is that if I go into this bug bug runner program, and I, and I try and run this right now, and I will tell you this does run usually, I'm going to get an error. So I run it, and I wait, and I wait. There it goes. Pro so it compiles, and then I get this kind of funny error telling me I believe it. Um, class not found. The reason for that is because you can only execute files that are inside your active project. So if I come up to Grid World Demo here and I right click, you'll see something called Set as Active Project. As soon as I set this to the active project, and now I run Bug Runner. takes a moment or two to come up. There it goes. It runs without problems. Okay, let's close this. So now that we understand the idea that we have a workspace, and inside that workspace there are projects, and inside those projects there are files. Notice we can minimize the, the file listing here. An example project just has no files right now, so that's, that's why we don't see anything or any option to expand it. What's important is that we're able to find these files on our hard drive. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to tile these and we're going to navigate through. So where I am right now is I'm in my documents right now and you'll notice in my documents is a jcreator le folder. It could be a jcreator folder um, depending if you've installed the pro or the academic version and unless you've changed the settings upon install it's always going to be here. So if we double click you're going to get another folder called my projects and we double click again Again, I'm doing, I'm explaining everything from the default settings. And then you're going to end up in here, and what you'll see now is, is a couple things we want to take note of. The first thing is you see these things called jcreator workspace files. Let me scroll this over a little bit so you can actually see it here. So if I scroll this back, we see that we have jcreator workspace files here. Um, and those keep track of what projects are in the workspace. We also have folders. So each of these folders represents a project. So if we look on the left here, we see example project, and there's the folder example project. We see grid world demo, and then we have grid world demo. Now you might have the question, well, why is there another folder here, but there's no fold, no project in the actual workspace? Well, the reason is, is that we put all the projects inside of this directory and only when we open specific workspaces are specific projects been populated. So this RP1 demo project is actually located inside RP1 basics. So if I come over here and I say file, let's open a recent workspace and let's open RP1 basics, and I say, yes, I want to close all documents, there's my RP1 demo. There it is there. So now watch the, the right hand side of the screen. I'm going to add a new project, an empty project, and I'm going to call it Watch This. And watch over here. I click Finish. And there's that file folder directory that's now there so we can start putting files in it. Finally, let's talk about files. All the files for the project are located inside that directory. So if I go to RP1 Demo, we see we have um, a jcreator project file. And that's a data file that stores information about the project. And then we have all our class. We have two types of files. We have our class files and our Java files. 
Remember, our Java files are the, are the files that contain the text you write. The class file is the compiled file that the computer executes. It's really important when you submit a program, you submit the Java source file for me. And the reason is that I want to actually look at what you've done and, and look at your code. If you were writing, say, a, a, an application for some, some, say, a piece of hardware, you, all you'd need to put in was be the .class file. In fact, you might not want to put the .java file in there so other people can't take it and modify it, but that's a larger discussion for another video, perhaps. Anyways, I hope this video has helped. It's really important, and with any IDE that you use, you take a moment and understand how the structure in the IDE correlates to the file structure inside the Windows system or whatever operating system you're using. All IDEs have very similar setups, but there are slight differences depending on um, the design of your project or the workspace that you want to set up. I hope this video has helped.